need a bike fit. Personally, I worry that the bike fit industry, small though it may be, is trying to convince us cyclists that we should have them. And the last thing we need is to be told that we have to spend more money to be able to enjoy cycling. So no, I don't think you have to have a bike fit. However, I am on my way to put some tricky questions to a leading bike fitter to see if he can convince me otherwise. Phil Burt is a physiotherapist and bike fitter who worked at the British cycling team through three exceedingly successful Olympic Games and with Team Sky and has since set up his own consultancy and has even written a book on the subject. Okay, Phil, let's start at the top of the tree with pro athletes, okay? okay. Did all the riders at British Cycling and at Team Sky when you were working there have bike fits? Uh, Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, at British Cycling, you, you would reach a certain level and you were afforded that sort of like level of service. Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah. So there's different levels within all program: podium, you know, academy, and then just you know, the junior ones. It's a lot of time and money. So, rightly, it's often was invested mainly around the national team, around if someone had a problem, like pain or discomfort, you know, we'd look into that, you know, why or is position causing that, or someone's rehabilitating, or more often than not, it'd be around the TT or pursuit position, so aero, you know, you go to the wind tunnel, get your position, okay, they can't hold it, well, how do we, how, how can we accommodate that better, either them or that. Um, pro level, yeah, we did a lot with Team Sky when we started off with, mainly because we were taking lots of different riders off from lots of very different bikes and putting them onto Team Sky, but most pro teams, I would say, I don't think they see the value in bike fit. They do in time trialing a lot, you know, because that's the more difficult discipline in road cycling. For, for normal people riding bikes where they're not winning or losing anything, or, you know, or potentially you are, you know, you're talking about getting to the end of a sportif yeah. 10 minutes quicker or whatever, can they not get to the ballpark correct optimal bike fit through stuff at home so watching YouTube videos reading articles reading your book yeah. like can, is it not possible to do a bike fit yourself well yeah, yeah I know where you're leading with this <laughs> I once stood up at a bike fit conference and said not everyone needs a bike fit and I stand by that that went down well not but uh, I do think um yeah, you can get a hell of a long way. The reason why I wrote the book, I'm not, and it's been so successful, is I'm not the world's best author. If you read any of my emails, you can tell that. But it, it's because there was a crying out need for that knowledge. People want to know that and that self-help thing. There's, there's loads of reasons why, for example, during lockdown, we started doing remote fitting. And what I learned through that is that a lot of people geographically in the world literally can't get to a bike fit. If you live five hours from the nearest town, you know, but you do lots of cycling. Um, money, you know, that's 10, 15 quid. And if you read it, and we, I get loads of emails, nicest thing you get, read your book, sort it out on ePay. Brilliant. If that's done it, that's fine. And some of the things we talked about today here, those, gen, you know, those static measures you can make, the general, which is called them rules of thumb, yeah, you can get yourself a long way there. I suppose the difference is, when we talk about pros, right, the difference a bike fit can make to them might be, you know, decimal points of a percentage, yeah? But here's the thing. To be a pro, you've already gone for a bike fit process, and the process was, can I be a pro? <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Do, do you see what I mean? So if your bike position or your ability to hold that position is that it isn't good enough, you get weeded out. So never really look at pros for why you have. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it does, yeah. Whereas most people come in here, I would say we're going to make you 20 to 30% better because you are not a pro, you haven't been through that process, and you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So that's where, yeah. So, and quite often, we often talk about that concept that came from the book, which to be like, so Ben Swift, we call him the micro adjuster, or I do, because you know, literally his saddle's two millimeters the wrong way and he will he'll be able to tell you, pee in the princess. Yeah. Geraint Thomas, macro absorber, Amazing athlete, apart from crashing when he, he injures himself. He rarely got injured through training or anything in my, in my tenure. And it's just a great guy absorbing changes. Here's the thing about that. You could be a macro absorber and you could be absorbing things that are suboptimal. That's really hard to work out yourself. So I suppose where I see the value in bike fit, it, uh, there's four types of people who really come in here. One, they, they've crossed the threshold in pain or discomfort, so they want to get back to cycling. That's an e easy, not an easy one, but it's easy to understand why they come. Yeah. Second is, I want to go faster for longer. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Third one is, I'm new to cycling. I want to know this is right. They're really smart. And then the fourth one is pre, I would say, people who are basically looking at spending a whole lot of money and they want a bit of security about what they're going to buy. And I'd add a fifth one in there, actually. We get home as now, people say, look, I'm just older. What used to work for me doesn't seem to be working for me now, but I want to carry on cycling. Can you help me? Yeah, so you're less adaptable, 
can this be a justice? Yeah. Okay, all right, that's cool. So I completely take your point that you can't look at pro cyclists yeah. as being the, the barometers of whether or not you need a bike fit. So mm. I completely get that. And I completely agree that not everyone necessarily needs a bike fit. And for a lot of people, they yeah. can get perfectly comfortable using the resources that are available yeah. online or in books, whatever. But yeah, those four things that you mentioned about if you're riding in pain yeah. and if you are getting older, if you are about performance, so particularly, I guess, aerodynamics, yeah. that side of bike yeah. fit. And then and if you're about to invest in a seriously expensive new bike and you want to make sure that it's right. But it makes sense if you're going to be dropping 10, 12 grand to spend three, 400 quid on going. Um, I'll buy to buy this, this is going to be right. Probably save you a lot of money, you know? Um, yeah, and the other thing is like people just do increase in the load and they get to a certain point, so they're doing longer and longer. It seems to me more recently that people have, yeah, which is great, just want to cycle massive long distances. What happens with that is the position that your position that worked for 100 miles doesn't work for two or 300. It's literally just physics. You're finding out the weak points that aren't very big down here, but then become bigger. At that point, that's what, again worth investing in because that can be hard to work out yourself. You know, identifying the weak points in your in your bike fit, as it were. You know, and so some of us, yeah, have that like that massive scope and have a very large bike fit window where it's hard to get wrong, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, and another one of them, much narrower and age load and all those things narrows that window so to speak yeah that's the way i would look at it yeah and what about the injury thing then because that is a really really tricky one yeah you know we we hear from people here at gcn who will say you know i've got this knee pain what should i do yeah. from your background as a physio before bike fit yeah i mean how much of that pain can you solve with the right fit well that uh, so I can be very straightforward with this. Um, yeah, I'm a physiotherapist, first and foremost. That gives me a big advantage, but I can tell you, and I had all the time in the world with special people who are already really good at doing changing human beings is a lot harder than changing bike setup, yeah? So okay. It's probably why I'm interested so much in that. I used to sit there massaging very famous cyclist knees for four weeks going, why isn't this getting better? It would get better if they're a rugby player. And then you go, Oh, you change your pedal setup. <laughs> and yet that could be the driving force in the background. So unless you get into that detective story of what of, oh, hold on a minute, why have you got the pain or dysfunction? Is it related? It might not be related to bike fit, it might not be related to it. it might, there might be very valid reasons, yeah, other reasons, yeah. But if that is the driving cause, you, unless you sort that out, you can never get to, yeah, you, know, you just manage the symptoms. You don't get to the cause of the problem. 86% of people report comfort as being the most important thing in any new cycling purchase. That's no, amazing, right. isn't it? Yeah. Far more above aero, far more above power. 86% of people said, I want to be more, co I, I, I consider comfort the most highest. But, so if you think about that, then that's what bike fit does. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that makes sense, being more comfortable is what basically will work with. Your fit is important to that comfort feeling, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, I definitely think that bike fits are a good thing for some people. My concern with bike fitting yes. is that it feels like if you get a good one or a bad one, it depends on the person that's doing it, right? Yeah. yeah. So how do you know that you are getting the bike fit that's actually worth paying for? How do you find a good bike fitter? <laughs> really good question. I think what I would say is I often get asked about that around articles about physiotherapy, for example, where you say, um, and some people ask me, how do you know you're, a good, you're seeing a good physio or whether the physio is right for you? I say, um, nearly always, you, you should walk away for the first consultation with physio believing in the diagnosis you've been given, yeah? So it's a working diagnosis. What have they said there's a problem and what are you gonna do about it and what is the plan, yeah? And then you should be feeling better within three to four treatments. If you're not, then I don't think it's working. It's not yeah. to say you're fixed by them, but you should be. So I think the same with bite thing. If you wanted to do some research, I'd phone up the person you're gonna see and ask them what they're gonna do. I mean, they might not be able to spend all day with you, term and verse, but have a look at them online, have a look at what other people have said about them. You know, that's always a really good judgment. You know, you can stand by your endorsements, you know. Um, I think it's finding the bike bike for you. If you're coming with, you know, say you've been cycling for years and years, you've had several bike fits already, you know there's a medical element or injury to thing, then you're probably gonna look for a medical-led bike fit. The advantage I have as a physiotherapist is I think sometimes, you know, number one, we can go, okay, that's that, 
we can accommodate that by changing these things and that will get better. That's hard to do if you haven't got that medical background knowledge. It's just a fact of life. So I often say, well, who, who, who should invest in a bike fit? And we talked about some of those characters there, those personas of people who might get benefit from bike fit. But one benefit of a good bike fit where you're going through this process here is at least you can be maybe spending time, money and effort on things that can make a difference. I have... I cannot tell you how many people have sat in that seat where you are with a bag of 10 saddles next to them, <laughs> right? That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> and, if, and, and many of them say, I wish I'd come and see you at the beginning. So that's what I call disappearing down the rabbit hole of saddle choice, whereas you have saddle pain and you just keep changing the saddle. But here's the oxymoron. Saddle pain is not about the saddle sometimes. It's about your position and where the saddle is and what you're trying to do, you know? So, I feel quite I feel quite happy having had this discussion, Phil, because I, I like the fact that we both agree that you don't need to have a bike fit. Nope. So that's cool. But then equally, I can absolutely see the reasons why many people would benefit from a bike fit. Yeah. And they'd go faster or they'd be more comfortable or they could go for longer yep. or they just have peace of mind that actually what they're doing is already right or what they're about to invest in is right. On, on this, it's like, let's talk about what is the threshold to cross before you need a bike fit, rather than do I need a bike fit, yeah? If you can imagine, people will do, pay anything to get out of pain or discomfort. So that, that the threshold there crosses very quickly. I'm gonna go and get a bike fit. I love cycling, my knee pain, so we get put under a lot of pressure in here. You won't believe this if you come in and say, this is the only thing I can do, it's very important for my, my health, my mental health, you know? They're great bike fits to get working, you know, getting people back healthy, and, and we, we take great, you know, pleasure and pride in doing that. But I suppose the threshold for going faster only comes when you can't go any faster. Yeah. <laughs> so often we meet people at that stage, they go, I've done everything I can. The threshold for being optimal, that's much lower to cross because if you don't know you're suboptimal, why would you do it? Yeah, okay. Phil, that was great. Thank you very much for answering my questions and doing so honestly <laughs> as well. I wait for the comments. <laughs> well, absolutely, yeah. Please get involved in the comments section. What do you think? Have you had a bike fit? Do you feel like you need a bike fit? And if so, what is the reason for it? So get involved in the comments section. And Phil, thank you so much again for your time. Yeah. Give the video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.